Hello everybody, welcome to another One Gauge video. Today I'm going to give you a rundown of how to modify and customize the One Gauge LCD screens. So these are the screens that we sell directly, typically 10 inch, 7 inch, or 5 inch screens. And we want to show you how to customize them. Really the main thing that we're going to show you today is how to add and remove numeric readings or to delete gauges that you don't need from your screen. So uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you, you want to check out a lot of the different LCD screen themes that are available. You can do this on our website, theonegage.com slash themes. We have um, most, if not all, of our themes down here that you can look at. Um, by clicking on the picture, you can um, open it up larger and zoom in. So you can check out a lot of the different themes that come installed on the screens. Um, and we try to update these and keep them updated based on what's actually available on the screens currently. So say you've got your one gauge product in, you've got it installed, you've got it going, but there's some extra gauges or some things that you have on on the screen design of your choice that you don't need. So let's say for example you're using one of these classic designs and you don't need all of these gauges here at the bottom. So we're going to show you how to get rid of those and clean up the design a little bit so that you can um, so you're not seeing random readings that you don't need. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download a piece of software that's free. It's called Nexian Editor. So you can type that into Google and then this link takes you right here. You can choose EXE Download. That's going to download just like a typical installation file and you can install this on your computer. Now this does require Windows um, to use so you're going to need to download it on a Windows computer. Once you do that um, the other thing that you need to do is you need to download the screen file from OneGage. You can do this by going to our um, FAQs page. It's also up here. Um, if you click on Learn and then Learn FAQs and Documentation, or it's just the onegage.com slash FAQs. Once you do that, if you click into this Code Updates folder, that's going to have a lot of different codes and things like that available. Um, in that folder, you're going to find a download link for the most updated one gauge LCD themes. So you can download that file. You want to download it and save it. And then when you open up, when you install and open up your Nextian, close out of this one. When you open up Nextian, this is what you're going to see. And you're going to want to open the file that you saved. So if you saved it to downloads, you can down open it up there. Okay, so in this case, this is my example file that I'm going to be using today. Yours is going to look very similar to this when you open it up. I'm going to give you a tour of the software. Um, don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff in here, but most of it you're never going to have to touch. So the important things are that you just be very careful about what you delete. Make sure you don't delete anything that you don't mean to delete because the screens are really complicated. They're full of stuff. And so you want to make sure that when you're looking through things and making changes that you only change what you want. So I would make a lot of backup saves. Uh, make sure you, you can always, of course, go download the base file again and start over. But um, to avoid any kind of issues on screen, you want to make sure that you're careful about what you do. So um, up here, starting at the top left, this is if you want to create a new element. And so by element, I mean like a text box, an image, things like that. So you can create those up here, and we'll talk through that. Down here on the right, um, and this is how I have my window set up. When you first install the software, it might look a little bit different from this. You may have to move things around a little bit. So here I've got all the different image files that are stored to these screens. Now these screens, the way they work is that they basically just recall images. So the one gauge tells the screen, hey, your coolant temp is 100, display the correct image for a 100 reading. That's really how it works. And that's why we can't, um, with these screens, now there are other options, but with these screens we can't do live video, like you can't do live maps, you can't do like a backup camera or something like that. But um, for just gauge readings, these screens are very simple um, and they work really well. They're, they're very um, relatively simple to use and, and accurate and quick to respond. So, um, all your images are over here, so if you're wanting to add like a custom background to one of the images, to one of the themes, then you can add pictures just by clicking here 
and it's going to bring up your typical Windows Explorer menu. You can add images there. Just make sure that your images, when they're added, they need to stay at the bottom. The order of these images is very important because if this gets off, it's going to change the way that it communicates with the OneGage Hub. Okay, so just when you add new images, add them at the very bottom here. They should, they'll do that automatically, but just don't start dragging them around. Um, over here on the right is all your different pages. So each page is a different LCD screen design. There's also um, the different menus and things like that that are available on here. And as you click through, you'll see all the different designs. So most of them you can leave alone. Um, I would just recommend editing the one or two designs that you're, that you're looking to modify. Down here are all the attributes for each of the elements that I talked about. So if you click on something like a text box, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of different things. The, the main things that you need to pay attention to are the object name and then things like the font in this case for a text and then the color. The PCO is the primary color. Okay. You can also change what the text contains right here. So if you, uh, I don't know, just put in anything you want and it's going to change the text up here. Okay. As usual, you can undo, redo, all those buttons are up here at the top, cut, copy, paste, those types of things. So let's go to an example. I'm going to show you what we talked about just a minute ago, um, that classic, uh, the classic trans, which is classic transparent. Um, screen and let's edit it with the example with taking in mind maybe you want to get rid of all of these gauges right here okay so this is a very busy screen there's a lot happening on here each of these yellow labels is a label for an element okay so when you click through you have to be careful about what you're actually clicking on um, you need to make sure that you only delete like I said the things that you really mean to delete so for example, I want to get rid of this EGT reading, so I can click on this um, high temperature one number, and I can just click delete, and it's gone. Okay. Now the software is a little goofy in that sometimes it gets a little messed up. If you zoom out and then zoom back in, it'll refresh for you and show you, you know, what it actually is supposed to look like. Okay. So I'm going to click on each one of these things individually. I'm going to delete them one at a time very carefully making sure I don't select anything that I don't mean to select and I'll show you why that's important here in a second okay so I'm deleting all of these things and then I'll zoom out that way it re whoops I zoomed out way too far that way it refreshes the screen okay so one thing to watch out for is there are some transparent buttons in each of the corners of the screen and that's how I've set it up for you to be able to navigate the screen move between menus and things like that so you do not want to accidentally delete these buttons alright so what I do if I'm gonna make any edits to anything around these buttons you'll know if it, it's a button because it's labeled B1, B2, B3, B0 in the object name and in the little yellow label so if I'm gonna be editing something over here I'm just gonna move this button out of the way and then I'm going to make sure that when I'm done, I bring it back. These buttons, like I say, allow you to move between screens. So if you deleted it and you went to the screen, you wouldn't be able to navigate off of the screen if you delete those buttons. Okay. So let's see. We deleted all of those things. We can delete these little lines. They're very small, so it's kind of tough to click on them. All right. And let's say you know we want to move, we want to make our fuel level reading a little bit bigger. So we're going to bring our fuel level number down here, and then our fuel text right here to label it. And so if we want to make this text larger, we need to navigate over to our font menu, and this shows us all of the different fonts. Each ID is a different font and a different size. So I name them according to the size. The H gives you the you know basically the font size right here so this one let's click on FLN it's currently using font 30 which I have as serpentine italics the height is 48 so if I want to go to a larger font I can just kind of move down numbers here these are the same font but larger versions of it so let's change FLN to 32 okay and now it's larger but notice 
uh, my box isn't large enough to hold all the numbers now so I just need to expand how large this box is and if I want to see what it's going to look like um, for example if fuel is full and it's at a hundred I can click on FLN and go to this value right here and change it to 100. Now that value is obviously automatically going to change when one gauge communicates with the screen, but this is a good way for you to see what it will actually look like um, on the screen. Okay, so now I've moved things around a little bit. I've customized it a little. Um, you know, maybe I want to move the fuel level readings over here, and I can bring voltage down and put it right here. But say I have a sensor that I want a reading on the screen, but it's not currently on the screen. Let's take, for example, intake temperature. So I've installed an intake temperature sensor on my one gauge setup, and I want it to be displayed on my gauge screen. So let's, I'm going to move, just going to undo this and move voltage back. Oop, went a little too far. Okay, now. Um, to help you out a little bit, each of so each of these object names like SPN, that's your speed number, and I've listed all of those. You just need to find the designer screen over here on the right. So in this case, it's page 39. When you download the file, it might be page 45, it might be page 50. It's hard to say, but you just need to look for the designer, um, the designer page over here on the right. And that's going to give you a list of all of the very typical sensors that you're going to want to create a reading for. Okay, so for example, if you want to create a coolant temp reading, you would name that object coolant temp. So you can go up here to the left and you would just create a standard number and you would rename it CTN, an object name. Now the case, the capital and lowercase does matter, so it is case sensitive. You need to be careful of that. So just copy this exactly, because there are some that are lowercase and some that are uppercase. So that's the CTN reading. Notice a few of these say float. That just means that instead of creating a number here, you would want to create an X float. And notice that gives you a decimal point, which is what you want because voltage AFR, those readings require a decimal point. Okay, so if you were creating an AFR number, you would just rename this to AFRN, AFRN, an object name. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. Um, this works the same as with text, so you can change the font. Say, you can scroll down here. There's, I've got almost 90 fonts on here. Um, you can also add your own. I'll show you how to do that in a second, but let's let's do font 67 we changed to that okay so now it's a, a, a small version of this one let's make it a little bit bigger so we can go to font 70 that makes it larger now say I want my um, let's say I want the color of the font to be different your primary color is what controls the color of the text so you could select here and then you've got this menu where you can change the color however you want. Just make sure you change this slider. And this gives you an idea of what the actual color will look like. So we can make it, let's make it dark red. Okay, so we've changed that color to dark red. Now, right now it's important to, to know if I copy this and I go and put it on a different screen, let's say I put it right here and paste it, notice it has a background. To get rid of that background, you just go to this STA box and click on the drop down and hit transparency and now your background is gone. If you do want the background, you can change the background when the solid color is selected with this BCO background color box. So you could make it, you know, whatever color you might want. Okay, but for the most part, I almost always use this transparency and then the, the background is just the color of whatever the background of the, the page is. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that because I copied it onto that page. I don't wanna leave it there. All right, so now we've got this coolant temperature reading, but we want it to be intake temp, so let's change it to ITN right here in object name. Okay, and let's move it over to the page that we were using. So I'm gonna copy this 
and then scroll back up here to the classic transparent and then I'm going to paste it okay and now we have an ITN reading now if I had tried to paste in an, an object called CTN you can watch what happens if I try to change it to CTN I get an error because you cannot have two objects on the page two elements that are the same name so but ITN is fine now if I want it to match this font which this looks pretty goofy so I want it to match this fuel level number font all I have to do is look click on it and look at what font number it's using and then match that 32 okay and I can of course change I need to get rid of the background change it to transparency and I can change the color of the font to black okay now of course we want to be able to know what this is at the bottom you know like we've got this fuel up fuel percent reading our label down here so let's all we have to do is we can copy this right click and then copy and paste and then drag that over and then right here in the txt you just rename that to maybe just put intake okay i usually try to make my boxes a little bigger to make sure that the all the font shows if the box is too small you see it will cut off part of the um, part of the text okay so that looks pretty good um, and and that's really the basics of of how to add and delete things you can delete pretty much anything you want just be sure that you do not delete these buttons otherwise you can get stuck now what you can do to test everything to make sure everything works before you start it is you've got this handy little debug button up here so what I'll do is I'm gonna click this button and it's gonna run through it's gonna basically check everything and then it'll bring up this pop-up window right here and you can you can basically click the screen exactly as you would touch it if you were using the the physical screen with the one gauge so I'm gonna click on this once and that's gonna bring this to the first screen and so I can navigate back and forth using the buttons at the bottom just like I would if I were touching the screen live okay so this is what it's gonna look like now this little number right here is just to help you set the home page when you're using the screen that's gonna disappear when you when you're using the actual screen but for now this is an idea of what your screen is gonna look like just with the basic readings and of course it will start to show live data once everything's powered on and plugged in okay so that's the basics um, that's all I want to talk through right now the one thing I haven't shown you is how to add a font if you want to do that um, you back in your main menu you hit tools and font generator and then you can choose the font that you want to use so I've got this digital font right here. Let's make it bigger, changing the height. You can put in whatever height you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, that's going to be pretty large. And then you want to you want to give it a name. I what I usually do is give it like a code name and then hit one one two. And then um, you hit generate font, and it's going to let you save the font. And when you do this. Um, once you save it, then it will give you the option to um, it will give you the option to be able to add this to the current project, and that's what you want to do. And then at the bottom, you'll have that font listed as the lowest font, and then you can just change it to when you select your text or your intake um, number. In this case, you can change it to your newest font so you would type in 90 if you had added a font it's not gonna let me do that because I don't have a font number 90 so um, as usual if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us the best way to reach us for things like this is email our email is info at the one gauge dot com um, hopefully this gives you a good rundown of the basics I'm gonna do a part two of this video that will run you through more advanced if you want to create your own background for this or you want to change um, some of the themes and add your own gauges, gauge images, things like that, then I'll do a follow-up video. Thanks for watching. Again, let us know if you have questions or any issues. We're happy to help.